An IDF official says one of its soldiers saw the hostages emerging from a building without shirts on, holding a stick with white cloth on it. Uh, nevertheless, all three were shot dead. I want to combine that with um, the news that we had a bit earlier in the week that elicited actually an international reaction, including one from our own Prime Minister, um, Rishi Sunak. Uh, you may have seen clips of an interview that is now doing the rounds. Uh, Sky News interviewed the Israeli ambassador to the UK. And during that interview, um, Zippy Hotavelli ruled out categorically a two-state solution for uh, Gaza, Gaza and the occupied West Bank. Now, you will know that in the West, this has been very much mooted as a way in which to bring about long-term peace and security for Israel and also peace, dignity and security for the Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip and on the West Bank. Um, Sunak... Uh, issued a statement saying that uh, that wasn't reasonable, in essence. And Biden has, of course, encouraged the Israelis to um, make that part of its consideration. Uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, Elon Levy, spokesperson for the Israeli government, has agreed to come on to the show um, at quite short notice. So thank you very much indeed for doing that. You are, of course, spokesperson for the Israeli government. Um, let's turn first to that um, to that tragic news uh, about the three hostages. Um, clearly, Hamas should not have kidnapped them in the first place. Um, but of course, uh, the Israeli mission has been twofold. One, to recover the, the hostages, and the second one, to uh, originally at least, to eliminate Hamas. Can you give us more details on how it is that the IDF killed those three young men in their 20s, please? This really is an unspeakable and unbearable tragedy and the whole of Israeli society is in a lot of shock and pain today. I can say last night at Shabbat dinner when the news came through, no one could speak for five minutes because everyone was stunned into silence. Uh, the incident is under investigation. It's clear that a terrible, terrible mistake was made here. Our forces are operating in very difficult circumstances, fighting in urban areas where Hamas is fighting in civilian clothes, out of civilian buildings. There have been many cases where they have laid booby traps of dolls and played recordings of voices in Hebrew to try to lure our forces into ambushes. Uh, and it's clear that a terrible, awful mistake was made here and it will be rigorously investigated. Lessons are being learned and our thoughts and prayers are, are with their families. You know, I, I visited Kfar Aza just this week uh, to see the ruins of the massacre. And in the youth village where two of them were abducted from, there were basically no survivors. Everyone was either abducted or murdered. And they put banners on the sides of the houses with the names of the people who were taken. And, and I was outside their houses this week and, and it's very painful. Um, I actually saw that video um, that you did that you've been posting and it was it was terrible. And in a way, that makes this mistake all the worse. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to read you the details from the IDF um, statement um, because it raises some really important questions for the way in which the IDF have been operating in Gaza. And you yourself know, Mr. Levy, that... Um, the parents of the hostages and the family members of the hostages in Tel Aviv have been holding demonstrations because they are so horrified and so worried about their loved ones. So this from the statement from the IDF. Um, the IDF has given more details. It says it mistakenly killed three hostages. Um, an official says one of its soldiers saw the hostages emerging from a building without shirts on, holding a stick with a white cloth on it. The soldier felt threatened and opened fire declaring that the men were terrorists, according to the IDF official. Two hostages were killed immediately and one was injured and ran back into the building. The soldiers heard a cry for help in Hebrew and immediately the battalion commander issued a ceasefire order only for other soldiers to carry on shooting and the third man was killed. So just to, just to zoom in on that... They came out with their shirts off, so it was to show that they were not booby-trapped, presumably. They were holding a stick with a white cloth on it, which internationally is um, assumed to mean um, that they are giving up. How on earth was that mistake made? They were clearly That's not a threat, question. were they? 
No, that is the question that everyone in this country is asking. How on earth such an awful mistake could have been made? The IDF is investigating. We're learning lessons. Uh, and we repeat our demand that Hamas must release the remaining 129 hostages immediately and unconditionally. It must give them access to the Red Cross until it releases them. We're talking about elderly people without their medication, people who are abducted with life-threatening injuries. And every moment that Hamas holds them in a war zone, that Hamas embeds itself in civilian areas, in civilian buildings, trying to lure our forces into ambushes as we try to get the hostages out is a war crime. And we're going to continue doing everything we can to get those hostages out. And our strategy at the moment is to continue putting unrelenting military pressure on Hamas to release them. That was how we got the previous hostage release pause. We had Hamas begging for but a But that's breather. not how you got the hostages out. That's not actually how you got the hostages out. Just to go back to the details of what is an appalling situation. Well, sorry, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The building where these men had gone into had SOS marked on it. As I say, they were in civilian garb. They were stripped to the waist. They had a white flag. They didn't appear uh, armed, and yet they were shot anyway. The logical conclusion of that, and I think we can both agree, can't we, that, that the shooting dead of those three men is breaking the rules of engagement. We can all agree that because the IDF have agreed to that. But it does lead me to wonder, in other cases, where the people that are being shot dead are not in fact Israeli hostages, but are in fact Palestinians, has it until now been IDF policy to shoot dead people who are clearly civilians, that are Palestinians, because they are Palestinians? As you said, incidences like this are clearly violations of rules of engagement. Our forces have a very clear mission to distinguish between civilians and between combatants. Hamas tries to make that as difficult as possible. Not in this case. Not in, in this case. The firefight was, this is the IDF saying this, the, uh, the firefight was over. These three men were left behind. So just answer my question. Were they shot because the IDF thought that they were Palestinian civilians? Is that what happened? The IDF is investigating the incident. I can't comment on it. This was clearly an awful, awful mistake. Let's go back the to the rest of the hostages open. then, because 110 plus have been released uh, mm -hmm. from Hamas um, hands and released back to their families and their friends and their loved ones in Israel. The vast majority of people that have been released got to that point because of negotiations. Because Israel and Hamas sat down together and negotiations were broad, uh, that were brokered by the Qataris. Talking works, doesn't it? So why on earth did Israel remove its diplomats from Qatar? Those negotiations were made possible because of the military pressure that had been placed on Hamas. Hamas did not abduct the hostages and say, let's start talking. Hamas, had, Hamas has a long record of holding hostages. We have hostages it's been holding since 2014. We haven't been able to get out. And what brought Hamas to the table, what brought it to a position where it was willing to release the women and children, was unrelenting military pressure. Not according That's to the Qataris. Point. The Qataris well, say that Hamas was open to negotiations before the ground invasion. That is on record. So I understand that that is your position, but as you know, that is disputed. Well, the the IDF has only actually managed to regain one hostage through military action. That's correct, isn't it? Sangeeta, the clearest evidence of the fact that we had Hamas begging for a breather was that part of the hostage release pause was that there would be a temporary cessation in fighting, because that is what Hamas wanted in exchange for releasing the hostages. We wanted hostages back. They wanted a temporary stop in the fighting because they were getting clobbered. And as a result, they agreed to a pause. Brilliant. They Why didn't it continue then? Pause. Because actually, you could have continued the humanitarian pause. On December 1st. We you were could have continued the hang on. You could have continued the humanitarian pause. You could have ensured to. a ceasefire and you could have ensured that we didn't get to 20 thousand dead in Gaza, you could have got more of hostages, more hostages out. Instead, we're at this awful scenario where on Saturday morning, nine weeks into the bombardment, the total siege of Gaza and a ground invasion, the Israelis have just shot dead three Israeli hostages. This military strategy is not working.
Is it? Sagita, let's correct the record because I think you have some of the chronology backwards. On December 1st, Hamas decided to violate the hostage release pause when it stopped releasing all the women and children it was obligated to do under that framework. And Hamas says Saturday, that you also violated it by firing. shooting dead two Palestinians on a road. No, Hamas violated the terms of the pause by not releasing all the women and children it was obligated to and then resuming rocket fire against Israel. Hamas started this war on October 7th and it restarted this war on December 1st. We said all throughout that hostage release pause, we would like to see that continue to get at least all the women and children out. And we had lined up enough violent offenders in our jails as part of that exchange to facilitate an extension of, I think, another three or four days. Hamas decided that it had enough of the pause in the fighting and it resumed hostilities by firing rockets at our cities and by not releasing all the women and children. And there are still 20 women and two children it has been holding hostage as part of those 129 it refuses to release. If it's working, why has it been rumoured by a number of experts who understand what's happening? And I, one that I spoke to off the record yesterday, who has just come back uh, from Qatar. Why is it the case that uh, it's said that Netanyahu is about to send back a negotiation, no, negotiation team from Israel? It's because the military strategy is not working and you are losing public opinion and you're also slowly but surely beginning to lose American backing. Sangeeta, the military strategy is to place unrelenting military pressure on Hamas to bring it to a place where it wants to release the hostages. That strategy was vindicated last time, and we're continuing with military pressure because sending a nice email to Hamas and asking it nicely to release the hostages was never going to be work. Are you going now, back to the negotiating uh, table? Is Israel going back to the negotiating table? I can't comment on sensitive details about negotiation, Sangeeta. Innocent lives hang in the balance. In theory, will, in theory this week, will we see Israel going back to the negotiating table? In theory, we want to do everything possible to get our hostages out. After but nine weeks of bombing, invasion and siege in Gaza, how many of Hamas's top leadership have you managed to either capture or kill? We know we've killed half of their battalion commanders. We know we killed the commander of the Sheja'ia battalion. And then when his deputy took over, we killed him. And now we've put his replacement on notice. We're going after in targeted door-to-door -door raids in intense urban fighting in urban areas where we have done our best to evacuate civilians. We spent over a month trying to get civilians out of those areas in northern Gaza so we can go after Hamas leaders. Unfortunately, many of them have now retreated to hiding in the tunnels they have built under civilian areas, trying to use the people above ground as human shields in total violation of humanitarian law and every norm of humanity. And we are going to continue going after all the monsters involved in the October 7th massacre, who've been threatening us with a repeat of the same massacre since the moment they retreated back into the Gaza Strip with 250 hostages having brutally massacred 1,200 of our people. Correct. Most of whom, in terms of the hostages, have been released through negotiation and ceasefire. Uh, on the not first of on the first of December, twenty twenty three, I made a note to myself: Diaf, Issa, and Sinwa. Diaf, Issa, and Sinwa, who are the three of your top capture or kill list for Hamas, were not in fact captured or killed two weeks ago. We're now on the sixteenth of December. How many of those three have you actually captured or killed? Sangeeta, it took five years for the Western coalition to get to... It's Abu just Bakr a number. Bakr. One, two or three. No, the senior leaders are hiding in tunnels under civilian areas and we have not apprehended them yet, but we're coming for them. So just, and they're, just they're to be clear, 20,000 uh, Gazans dead, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry, which you according would like to us to say yes. is controlled by Hamas. Uh, 20,000 dead Gazans, uh, around half of which are children, and you haven't managed to capture the three most important members of Hamas that you need to capture in order to meet your own military objective. So how long is this war going to go on for exactly? This war is going to end when it is safe for children to sleep in the beds in Kfar Aza, near Oz and Be'eri, in the communities that were brutally massacred on October 7th. This war will end when the diplomats at the United Nations who voted to keep Hamas on life support would feel safe taking responsibility to babysit children in those beds. That is our standard for ending the war. We call it the diplomat babysitter test. Because those Israeli communities that were brutally massacred on October 7th will not be a buffer zone against the Hamas terror regime. 
The Hamas terror regime will no longer be their neighbor when this war is over. And it's going to take as long as it has to take, not a day more, not a day less. And we think that our allies who want to bring this war towards a decisive end should stand firmly by our side as we use swift, overwhelming and decisive force as President Mr. Levy, Biden it's not right swift. It's very yeah, much yeah. overwhelming. Uh, this is uh, clearly Israel is going to win this war. The question is, when do you decide to declare that it's over? President Biden has described Israel's actions as indiscriminate killing of civilians and has now urged Israel to move to a lower intensity battle. Are you going to do that anytime soon? Sangeeta, if we'd wanted this war to end on October 8th, we could have. But when you take seriously the rules of proportionality and distinction and necessity as we do, when you carefully select targets, these things take time. Because unfortunately, Hamas has spent the last 16 years embedding itself under schools, under homes, under hospitals as part of a deliberate strategy to attack our people and then hide behind their people. Obviously, we want this war to end. Sangeeta, we all want this to be over already. But the question but is at what luxury. cost? The question is at what cost? And may I ask, actually, let's move on. Not, let's, let's just well, move on because I've been told that you, you've got to go. I've been told that you've got you to go. Me, I'd like to, well, you asked me a question. I'd like to answer it. Go for it. What cost? We're now at 20,000 dead Gazans. We've already lost 1,200 Israelis. More than 7,000 children are dead in Gaza. The chances are you just turned Gaza into a massive recruitment ground, not for Hamas, but for the thing that comes after it, which is most likely to be a more extreme version of something that you're already calling a terror group. So when is this going to end? Because this is, this is not a way to achieve safety for Israel, is it, Mr. Levy? First of all, we're not sure what would be more radical or extreme than the army of terror that burned families alive, raped Israeli women and girls, tortured little children on October 7th. And we think that what would act as a fillip for extremism and radicalism is if the army of terror that did that were able to get away with it. And if it felt emboldened because well-meaning thinking, well-meaning people around the world told Israel it has no right to defend itself. Is President Biden wrong then? At the end of this war. Is President, President Biden wrong? Biden, is President, President Biden, Biden wrong? has said from the very beginning of this war. He says you're killing indiscriminately. Is he wrong? He has said at every opportunity that the United States will stand shoulder to shoulder with us as we prosecute what is a common interest of ours to make sure that Hamas is destroyed in response to the October 7th massacre. And we've talked the Americans through every step in target selection process. We're learning from them. We're learning from you and the lessons of the campaign against ISIS in Syria and Iraq as we continue to go after the monsters who perpetrated the October 7th massacre. But have they you will learned the lessons of Afghanistan? Have you learnt the lessons of Afghanistan, where Indeed. the Americans and allied forces went in with no plan, the, the Americans decided to wreak vengeance when the whole country was in grief. 20 years later, thousands and thousands of dead people and the Taliban took control. And actually, this brings me on to my next question. I know you have to go. I'm I sorry. That one first. I'm sorry. Wait, it's all connected. Okay. OK, it's all connected. So it's okay. all connected because you will know that Israel's ambassador to uh, the UK has categorically ruled out a two state solution the day after or working towards the two state solution. So what is the plan for the Gaza Strip the day after Israel declares it has won this war? So you asked two very different questions. I'll try to answer the first one first. Mm. Uh, yes, we're learning the lessons from Afghanistan. That's why by any metric, the civilian to combatant ratio is far lower than it was in Afghanistan. Afghanistan was a 20 year war. Better. This is a nine yeah, week war. The, the ratio, I'm talking about the ratio of civilian to combatants when the fog of war clears will explain that's, very clearly. That's the been disputed and you know it. But anyway, let's, well, let's talk about the next day. I would be interested to see what figures you have about the civilian to combatant ratio in Afghanistan, but that's, but that's a different subject. Um, um, your question regarding the two-state solution. Um, I can talk you through our thinking. Uh, the Prime Minister here has said that we think the Palestinians should have every right to govern themselves and none of the rights to threaten our people. Now, there was a, an illuminating poll that came out two days ago showing that about 85% of Palestinians in the West Bank think that it was correct of Hamas to launch the October 7th massacre 
given everything that has happened in Gaza since. So I'm glad you mentioned that polling because I was looking at that very polling. Hang on a minute, you've just mentioned this polling. I looked at it last night and I also talked to a couple of experts who understand Mm. the Gaza script very well. And you're right, that was that's a pretty respectable polling organisation. But Mm. that polling was done in the midst of a total siege of Gaza whilst the Gazans have been bombed and they have been uh, subject to a ground incursion over the last nine weeks. Is it really surprising that they're saying that Hamas under these circumstances was right um, and that they do support them? Because at the moment they've got nothing else, have they? Well, I saw a similar poll right at the beginning of the war before the ground offensive began, suggesting similar levels of support for Hamas's atrocities. And I've seen the opposite. I think it's particularly shocking that given everything that has happened in Gaza since, a large majority of Palestinians think that it was the correct decision. Now, many Israelis will be asking, the Gaza Strip is a small territory tucked away in the corner of Israel, and the West Bank is a large mountain range a few miles away from Tel Aviv, Um, that is 20 times the size of Gaza. And many Israelis will be asking whether our security could be assured if an independent state were formed in the mountains overlooking Tel Aviv, populated by people, 85% of whom think that the acts of burning, beheading and rape on October 7th were justified, despite the cost that Gaza has faced since. But these are long term questions, and there will be a time to discuss long term questions. Right now, we still have missing persons and unidentifiable human remains in body bags. I have to get to an ad break. Just yes or no, is it now official Israeli policy that a two-state solution will not be considered? Official policy at the moment is we are focusing on prosecuting this war, destroying the October 7th monsters, and that is the top priority that this government is working on now. So was, was the Israeli ambassador wrong, yes or no, when she the said Israeli that you have ambassador. ruled out a two-state solution? Was she wrong? The pri- I'll tell you the Prime Minister's position. The Palestinians should have every right to govern themselves. Was she and wrong? No- it's a really simple question. Has the two-state well, no, solution been taken things, off the table? Because these things, aren't, these things are more complicated. She was wrong we then. 